question bends. How did you come about being part of the Fury team? Uh, I guess pretty much simple was Tyson Fury, but uh, that's his younger brother, and uh, I've been around him, all you know, the, the family and in the gym training with the family, and uh, obviously I've been in the gym with Tommy as well, uh, watching him and Tyson box and just helping out, just teaching a few things, and um, I guess just recently it just came about that um, having me train him for this. Uh, there's a big fight coming up here. There's a lot of credibility in your family, long line of champions being built in Detroit, and you know, honed, uh, extraordinary talent. Um, what can you tell us about Tommy? What do you bring to the table for somebody like Tommy? Well, Tommy's athletic, and he's been around boxing his whole life. Not actually boxing, but being around it, seeing it, and wanting to do it. Uh, but for whatever, whatever reasons, he didn't uh, stay in boxing as much as Tyson did. And uh, he's very athletic, very determined, and uh, he learns fast. So uh, it's exciting for me to be able to work with somebody like that because that's what makes me uh, get up and go a lot more for uh, somebody who really wants to learn and is excited about it. We all know that Tommy has, like you said, a great background in sports, very athletic. But he's now an influencer. He's uh, a star. He's very famous. And he's actually a star in the UK in one of those reality shows. So, you know, at 22, life could take a completely different direction. How serious is he about the sport? I believe Tommy's very serious about the sport. Um, you know, we joke around a little bit, but he always gets a little bit upset when we talk about it, about him uh, his other uh, career career moves that he's in, involved in. And uh, he does really want to box. I mean, he's, he's uh, you know, taking this fight here, and he's taking it very seriously. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's in his blood. It's, it's boxing. That's, it's, it's also in his culture, too. So the whole family boxes. Uh, me spending time over in England, uh, with Tyson and his family, the first thing they do with the kids is they want to say, can he fight? That's the first thing they want to know. So that's just a part of their culture and uh, it's in his blood as well. So can you really blame a guy who's good looking, coming from a family with deep roots in the sport, good, and a star, influencer? Reality TV has made huge stars. He can't really be upset about that, really. I, 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 I wish I was a reality show star. Anyway, when we look in the future, does Tommy have what it takes to be a real contender? I just believe time will tell, you know. He's uh, just starting to learn some new things in boxing. This is uh, it's a lot different than watching on TV and watching your big brother. So uh, it's just a learning process, and uh, just time will tell. Can't really say it right now. Uh, if I had those kind of powers, then uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what they say, if my aunt had wheels, she'd be a bicycle, that's not happening either. But I'm pretty sure you're very good at what you do. I know so. So let's not complain about that. I'm very, I'm very happy you're here, and I'm very excited to see what's going to happen December 18th. And right now we're going to open the floor for the press to make questions, to ask questions. We have a mic going on. Lance? Oh great, no no questions, thank you. <laughs> Shaker Hill, this is Lance Pugmire from USA Today. Just wanted to uh, have you elaborate on something you told me previously. Tommy's body of work is not very complete. I, you actually describe him as a little bit above a novice. What do you need to work on specifically to drive him to the level of where he can defeat Jake Paul? From what I see, I just need to work on Tommy's uh, footwork and uh, a little bit of his coordination, just getting him more familiar with certain moves that you do in boxing is going to make him uh, you know compete at a higher level than what he's been competing at i didn't tell much did i <laughs> come on sugar uh sugar hill keith Eidick from boxing scene.com uh, what did you think of tommy's performance against anthony taylor what did you like about it what did you not like about it was his last performance that was his last performance yes um, I didn't, actually, honestly, I didn't watch it. I didn't, but uh, from what I heard, it wasn't, <laughs> I heard it wasn't a good look, but, uh, you know, I guess that's from the family, so they're, uh, 
maybe over critical about it, but probably right. Follow-up question, how much do you think it motivates him because he has so much pressure on him from his family within his family? I think it is a certain amount of pressure, and uh, that's just something that, that comes with it. You know, uh, being the younger brother of the heavyweight champion of the world and, and always looking up to Tyson and wanting to be like him and do the things that he's done. Uh, it's always just been a pressure period, but now I know it's a bit more because this is a big stage. Now, this is not just in the gym sparring somebody, uh, being an, an amateur, uh, having fights, and, uh, and they even turn them pro. Each, each time, the longer he's in boxing, each step is just going to have more and more, um, you know, it's more of a challenge for him. So that's what anybody sort of say. Sugar Hill, where? Um, Team Kurenu Kawar of Sports. Uh, what do you think about this extra bet going on that they have that uh, Tommy has to change his name to Tommy Fumbers? It fumbles if he wins, if he loses, and uh, you know, vice versa, he gets uh, half a million if he wins. What do you think about that? From what you're telling me, it sounds a little bit personal, and it sounds like business. You said you got to change his name, and the other part is better some money. So, yeah, it's just personal. It's just something they got going on. If that's what they want to do, uh, it's interesting. It's just like if you had. Two guys in the street on the same on the same block, you know, making a bet. It's just a bet. Fair play. Javon over here. Uh, Jeremy here, just with fansided.com. It's Sugar Hill because you don't you're not gonna say it right, so it's just sugar is easier. Gotcha. Uh, when you're dealing with a fighter with potential, um, what are the things that you're looking at specifically when you see him and how do you go about unlocking that potential and is it that much harder when you're dealing with someone that's starting from a base level? Well, I've trained a lot of fighters from the base level from scratch, so it's not anything that's uh, unfamiliar to me. Mainly what I do is I watch them shadow box and just start making adjustments. I, I need to know what they're thinking when they're in their shadow box and, and that tells me a lot on what I need to work on with the fighters. And with me, everything I do is basics anyway, so I'm going to start to correct and fix the fundamentals so then we'll be able to achieve and excel in the things that the fighter wants to do. What is in his mind and what he wants to create. Sugar Hill, Mohamed Mubarak with the Electronic Urban Report. Tell us, uh, what more can you give to Tommy to add to his development? And where is he at right now? In, terms, in your opinion, where is he at in his development? Well, I think Tommy's at the development stage right now, just the beginning to start to understand and, and be really, really involved and focused in boxing. And uh, right now, I'm happy with that. And I think it's going to be a, a fast progress for Tommy because uh, some of the things I've showed him, how he how he grabbed hold to him so quickly and is able to do him. It's, uh, it reminds me a bit of Tyson. It's just that Tyson's been boxing his whole life in the ring and in the gym, and Tommy has it. So it's going to be interesting just to watch how fast he's going to really grow. And uh, like I said, it's exciting to me because I just enjoy teaching and watching somebody learn and go out there and do it and be happy about it. Is there a signature thing that the Fury family does in fighting, and does Tommy have that? It's not a signature thing, it's just fighting. So that would be the signature. Everybody in the family fights. And secondly, you've seen a lot of styles throughout your career. How would you categorize Jake Paul's style? What would you liken it most to from what you've seen of his fighting? I was just watching on the screen here and I was talking to uh, one of my other young fighters, Nico Ali Walsh, and he, I was asking him what did he see in the fight. And uh, it's just a lot, of, he cre he's, Jake is very creative in the ring, I'm watching him, so I hear bad talk about him, but I have to give him a lot of credit for what he's doing and, and how he's learning. He doesn't look like a, a beginner like everybody's talking about, but like a very, very beginner because of the things that he's doing as far as thinking and making adjustments and create, creating opportunities to, to land punches. And uh, yeah, I, I think he's coming along just fine, uh, just as well as anybody who's just starting boxing. Thank you, Giandra. It's always so good to see you. And uh, I know Tommy was supposed to be with us today, so it's not like we came empty-handed. Unfortunately, he had a family emergency. He's actually flying back to the UK as we speak, so we hope everything is working out well. And uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to have him soon via satellite Zoom. Like, 
technology. Thank you, Chris de Blasio. We will have him, we promise. Not today, soon. So, I just have one question. I know you're very strict. You always, you know, put us at bay. Media is always at bay in your camp. How are you gonna control the media attention that somebody like Tommy will bring to any boxing camp? Well, in the gym, we're just training. So it's no windows and that's it. Close the door, start training. Um, I mean, we have media days and things like that, things that we have to do. But me, I'm not too particular about videoing and posting things like that. Uh, I don't think it's that important. I don't really care if they do it, but as long as they focused on training. And uh, that's just the main part, what they do outside of the gym, as far as uh, doing their downtime on social media. Uh, I mean, it, it's all a business at this point, really. So I, I don't really complain about it. I don't do it, but I know it's a new thing that's out. And uh, you have to be able to take it and use it to be able to grow. And I think uh, with this, this fight here, the way things have gone, and uh, it's bringing a lot of attention to boxing. And that's with the social media and uh, you know how this thing has just grown to such a big event now. And uh, it's, just, it's just good for boxing, period. Um, I only see boxing growing because of this. I think that you know you have um, these two fighters, like novice fighters, fighting on a pay-per-view, like a big card. This is the big. This is big boxing right here. As you have these two, like beginning guys, fight on it. And I think it's just great. Everybody's gonna probably, a lot of people probably gonna disagree with me on that, but I do think it's great. I mean, you get people. If you're in a neighborhood and they're out there fighting, they're gonna gather around and watch it. It doesn't matter how much experience they really have. People just want to see a good fight. I agree, I agree. Coach, always a pleasure. Thank you for being with us, and we look forward to seeing you December 18th in Tampa. Thank you. Glad I was here, and uh, yeah, this is going to be a big event. Yes, we hope so. Thank you. So, 